At least we all wish we'd gone to Cuba. You can see all these images that we've all got behind us. They are all Cuban images that we are going to be telling you about over these next few lessons. And we're going to teach you all about a lot of Cuban music. And we're going to have great fun now. The great thing about Cuban music is that there's loads of different percussion instruments. So it's the kind of thing, if you're at home, then you can find that maybe you've only got a few things around you available. But you can pick certain ones because we'll find I'm sure that any some of the things we're teaching you will have something that you can play that you can easily pick up at home and you can use some of those instruments. Now the first thing that we're going to learn how to do today is learn how to play the clave rhythm but before we do that we're just going to kind of tell you a little bit about our teaching methods because we use what we call the three stage teaching method. Now we're not going to go into that too much now because there was another video a while ago that we filmed our first samba, Brazilian samba lesson. Go and have a look at that one on YouTube and you will see we, we talk about why we use our three stage teaching method and why we find it's a really good way of making sure that we can learn rhythms correctly. So the clave is the first rhythm and in Havana, our man in Havana, um, is Raoul and Raoul you have some clave can you show us what they sound like <laughs> yes well as you can see clave is two bits of wood hmm? there's many different kinds of clave and they probably you find in the, in your drawer a couple of uh, wooden spoons there you can actually use as well by beating it together now I'm just going to show you how to hold the club once you have the proper club you hold it in your hand and close your hand now you place the other club on top and then you remove the one underneath. Now what you have, you have a hole. And now the sound goes. Uh, it's a lovely sound. Actually, they have even two sounds. If you turn them around, can you hear the difference in pitch? So that's a low one and a high one. But we have something in store for you with courses. Courses, can you show us what you can do with, uh, with some of your clubbers? Go ahead. Yeah. Have that. The clave is a very important rhythm in our music and I would like to think the rhythm clave as a rhythm that has a first and a surname just because we have five so, or six different clave rhythms. We have the bossa nova clave, we have the Brazilian clave, the Afro-Cuban clave. So I would like to think this rhythm as a rhythm that has a first and a surname. And the clave that we are going to learn today is the 2-3 clave. So number two indicates that on the first half of our rhythm we're going to have two notes that we're going to play and number three that we're going to play three notes on the second half. So we're going to use the words one, two, three, play, clave. One, two, three, play, clave. One, two, three, play, clave. So we are going to clap this rhythm. On the first half, we are going to clap the second and the third beat when we say two and three. So one, two, three. And on the second half, we are going to clap when we say play, clave. So from the beginning, one, two, here we go. One, two, three, play, clave. One, two, three, play, clave. One, two, three. 
three, play clap, play one, two, three, play clap, play. One very important thing, as you can see, I don't clap on number one, so we skip number one. Always we skip number one, we never played number one. So one more time, one, two, here we go. One, two, three, play clap, play. 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 Fantastic, and I'm gonna use now my sticks. You know, I don't have my clavier with me. Raul has a clavier, so I'm going to play the same rhythm with my sticks. One, two, here we go. One, two, three, play, clap, play. One, two, three, play, clap, play. One, two, three, play, clap, play. One, two, three, play. Love and stop. Thank you very much. Mike, back to you. Thanks so much, Costas. Yes, yeah, so, with, by the way, Costas, I love your red car. I want to have a go in that car later. Um, looks great behind you there. Um, so, with that clave rhythm, you can see, like, Costas, he doesn't have real clave where he is at the moment, so he used a pair of sticks. So, wherever you are, if you basically have two wooden things, maybe it's two wooden spoons you could play together. But also, I have here a, a wood block. It's a block made out of wood. There we go, that's why it's called a wood block. Nice and simple. And it sounds exactly the same. So the point is, the clave is a wooden sound. So if you can find two things, a wooden stick, something you can have as a wooden stick, and something wooden that you're hitting, you should be able to create a clave rhythm pretty easily. Now, the next thing that we're going to learn how to do is how to play the maracas because the maracas they always get a uh, playing in cuban music and they sound great maracas now the thing about maracas is that they can very easily sound quite messy and not very rhythmic if you don't play them right and sometimes we get a bit carried away we want to move with the dancing around which is great but then we lose some of the rhythm. So we've got to make sure we can really think about how to play with a nice rhythm. The way I imagine it is that I imagine that I'm actually holding a pair of sticks rather than a um, rather than maracas. So like I've got these two sticks here and I'm imagining them, I am bouncing them on an invisible table that's kind of just below my shoulder height there. That's where I'm going to be bouncing them just one after the other. And it's like they're kind of bouncing away over and over again, it's like one and two and three and four and... Now, if I do that with my maracas, what you'll hear... I get quite a crisp sound. If I make sure, or if I don't imagine there's a table there... You see, it doesn't sound anywhere near as crisp. And it's one of those things that there's all these little beads on the inside. We've got to really think about what are those beads doing. And if we imagine we've kind of got almost a flick movement we're going to get a crisper sound out of it. And then we can imagine, rather than there being a wall, we're going to, so rather than in the table, we're going to hit the wall. And it changes sound. So you can really play around these maracas, get some really nice sounds. Another thing I've found as well, if you hold them quite near the bottom, again you don't have much control over them, if you actually hold them a little bit higher up and hold them quite loosely, you're going to have more control over what the beads are doing on the inside as well. So there's the maraca part. So whatever you've got that has a nice shaky sound, you can play maracas. And I think, Tim, what have, let's have a look at um, Tim there. Tim, what have you got that you could use in, if you don't have real maracas? Okay. Well, I um, love using anything that you can just put things into, and it, help, it helps if they have a lid you can take off. So I have loads of these coffee cups around because I always forget to take it with me when I go on the road. So I, I found that, you know, you pop the lid off. This one's got some beans in it, so that makes quite a, actually quite a, a loud kind of sound. This one, if I remember rightly, yeah, it's got some rice in it, so that makes a different sound. So actually these two make different sounds, but you can still get them to make to the sharp sound that Mike was just showing you. And of course, if I get two that are similar, here's another one. This one's got some lentils in it. So then we've got 
and you get that nice sharp sound. And again, if you imagine you're tapping the table with them, rather than just shaking them like that, then you'll get a much nicer sound. Okay, Mike, that was great. Thanks so much, Tim. Yeah, that's brilliant. So you can actually have quite a lot of fun experimenting around, seeing what things could you, what containers could you fill up with different things, with lentils, with beans, with rice, things like that, um, that, that Tim said. And of course, everybody get hungry at the end. You can eat it as well, which is nice. So the other thing we have as well in our Cuban music, we've had the clave, we've had the maracas. Another thing that you get a lot in Cuban music is a cowbell. Now, the cowbell part, um, it's slightly tricky that we're going to play for our music. So we're going to say the rhythm first. The rhythm goes one, two, three, Cuba. That was easy. The music comes from Cuba. We just have to count to one, two, three. So it goes one, two, three, Cuba. Should we just clap that together? Ready? Three, four, one, two, three, Cuba. Easy. Now, you might be thinking, Mike said it's hard. It is hard because we have to do the second half. That was just the first bit. The second bit goes... Play cowbell, play cowbell. Okay, can we try that? Play cowbell, play cowbell. So when we put it all together, it goes one, two, three, Cuba, play cowbell, play cowbell. One, two, three, Cuba, play cowbell, play cowbell. Shall we have a go at clapping that together? Ready? One, two, three, go. One, two, three, Cuba, play cowbell, play cowbell. One, two, Three, Cuba, play, cowbell, play, cowbell. One, two, three, Cuba, play, cowbell, play, cowbell. One, two, three, Cuba, play, cowbell, play, cowbell. Great. Now, here is the cowbell. And with the cowbell, I've got a pretty thick stick I'm going to play it with here. Now, the way to hold a cowbell, again, people often struggle with this, is kind of knowing how to hold it. It's all thinking about how you're going to control the sound so it doesn't ring on too much. So, we don't hold it like that. Instead, what you do is you put your hand out, your weaker hand, the hand that's not going to hold the stick in, and you put the cowbell on top of it with the mouth of the cowbell pointing away from you. And then, with my stick, I'm actually going to hit it here, pretty much the way I've got that stick on the top there. And that's going to create this really nice sound. There are other places I can use it. I can get a different sound if I want to as well. But just for the moment, for our rhythm, I'm going to be playing here. So shall we try our rhythm together? Ready? One, two, three, go! One, two, three, Cuba, play, cowbell, play, cowbell. One, two, three, Cuba. Great. So, if you are thinking, I don't have a cowbell at home, what can I use? Well, look, what I've got here, which works just as well, I've got a mug. I've got to make sure there's nothing inside the mug. It's got to be empty. Um, but then if you get a pen and hold the mug in one hand, it creates a similar sound. Now, you could be looking for something metal, but actually, of course, this is just ceramic mug. Be careful how hard you hit it. You don't want to do it on an expensive mug. But that creates a very, very similar sound. And also, I can actually get slightly different sounds that we're going to be exploring a little bit later as well. So if you have a mug at home, you can play that. If you have something that you've filled full of some beans or some rice, um, you could also be playing that to replicate the shaker. And if you've got any two wooden things, you can be putting that all together to be like your clave part. So, um, shall we put it all together? Shall we just have a go? Yeah? Shall we see what it sounds like? So you can decide if you're going to play the clave part, the cowbell part or the maraca part today. Shall we give this a go and see how we go? So, are you ready? After four, ready? One, two, three, go! Four, three, two, one, and stop! Tell you what, shall we start that once more? Because I think some of us are like, oh, well, how do we start it? Ready? One, two, uh, one, two, three, go. Two, three, play, 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 play
So any rhythm you keep playing over again is a pattern. If you have a look at, I think it was Samba, lesson number one that we did, we explained quite a lot what we mean by pulse, rhythm and pattern and things like that. Go and have a look at those videos. So also what we'd love you to do is come back and learn the next bit of Cuban music because you can see Raul at the end there was playing something that we haven't taught yet. Um, Raul had some drums that we're going to learn about next time as well. Um, we're going to learn some other things as well. Don't forget, this is not the end of the lesson, that we also have a quiz on the website, on the InspireWorks website that accompanies this lesson. Go and join in with that quiz. Go and see if you can get all the answers right. Also, what would be brilliant is if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel, because it's not just these lessons that we're putting on YouTube. We're putting all kinds of things on YouTube, and then you can have great fun learning all the different things we're doing. So thank you very much, everybody. We will see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.